audience, Dr. Goldberg. Uh, please come forward. We look forward to your testimony in opposition to the legislation. You have five minutes, ma'am. Please proceed. And committee members, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. I'm Sharon Goldberg. I'm an internal medicine physician. I've practiced medicine for 21 years, and my background is mostly academic, internal medicine, hospital-based, clinical research, and medical education. Um, I am going to skip many of the things I wanted to say because I didn't realize it was only five minutes. Wireless radiation has biological effects, period. This is no longer a subject for debate when you look at PubMed and the peer-reviewed literature. These effects are seen in all life forms, plants, animals, insects, microbes. In humans, we have clear evidence of cancer now. There is no question. Um, we have evidence of DNA damage, cardiomyopathy, which is the precursor of congestive heart failure, neuropsychiatric effects. So 5G is not a conversation about whether or not these biological effects exist. They clearly do. 5G is a conversation about unsustainable healthcare expenditures. Why do I say this? We've been sitting on the evidence for EMR and chronic disease for decades. Um, and now we are seeing all these epidemics appearing. So diabetes is the first epidemic. I think most of you know the statistics. They're very scary. One in three American children will become diabetic in their lifetime, and if they're Hispanic females, the number is one in two. Okay. So what does this have to do with wireless radiation? Wireless radiation and other electromagnetic fields, such as magnetic fields and dirty electricity, have been clearly associated with elevated blood sugar and diabetes. That is what the peer-reviewed literature says. It is not opinion. The closer you live to a cell tower, the higher your blood glucose. That is based on hemoglobin A1C measurements. So the idea with small cells of putting the cells closer to people's homes and bedrooms scientifically is very dangerous. And from an economic perspective, it's dangerous. And you may not know this. I was shocked to find this out. But the way you create a, a model of diabetes in rats in the lab is by exposing them to 2.4 gigahertz. And this is not for long-term exposure. Um, so. I don't have time to talk about the costs, but the huge problem with diabetes really is chronic kidney disease. Um, End-stage renal disease, the worst complication of diabetes, leads to hemodialysis. Hemodialysis is an automatic qualification for Medicare. Um, and if you don't qualify for Medicare, we still have to dialyze the patient. And the state ends up paying in many different instances. So, Renal failure is 1% of Medicare, but it takes up 7% of all Medicare expenditures. Uh, I don't have time to talk about this anymore, but once again, we have, so the other epidemics that clearly link from the science with electromagnetic radiation are related to mental health. And this is, this is straight from PubMed. This isn't my opinion, this is science. Dr. Okay? Goldberg, for mm -hmm. those of us who aren't physicians, what is PubMed? I'm sorry. It's just the, the, it's our National Library of Medicine. This is where you would go. This is just the peer-reviewed literature. So we have three epidemics that clearly, they're essentially one epidemic. We have deterioration of mental health in the United States. And if you look really at the science, what does it show? And these epidemics are our suicide epidemic, um, epidemics in violent, so shootings, and the opioid epidemic. And I don't have, five minutes is not the time to talk about this. This is in the peer-reviewed literature. I have a file to submit for the record, but these are facts, these aren't, and these are things that have just been glossed over by the wireless industry, and I, I really don't have time to talk about them in five minutes, I wish I did. Um, but we need to examine our epidemics in the context of our EMF exposures. What does that mean? That means that the CDC tracking these epidemics needs to, we need to start measuring how much radiation are people being exposed to and before we roll out 5G. And this means there are four kinds of electromagnetic fields that we know are harmful to human health. So radio frequency radiation, magnetic fields, dirty electricity, and electric fields, okay? Our exposure 
Any given person, and all humans are affected by EMFs, our given exposure has nothing to do with the research that, that my colleagues are going to cite with the National Toxicology Program. That is an assessment of the risk of one cell phone in the near field, okay? What is our exposure in a, in a day? It's not one cell phone. It's cell phones, it's multiple wireless networks, it's smart meters, it's cell towers. It's this sandwich and it all adds up. And this is a, this is a serious problem for occupational health public safety and personal safety. And I feel that it's irresponsible to be even talking about the internet of things and rolling out a new untested technology when we're not even measuring what are our current exposures from the current networks. Doctor, appreciate your testimony. Would you again provide us with your credentials? You said at the beginning. Yes, I'm an MD. I'm board certified in internal medicine. Um, I've been assistant professor at different medical schools, mostly in New York, most recently the University of Miami. And I got interested in electromagnetic fields after my administrator at the University of Miami gave me a new iPhone. I used it for 20 minutes on speaker and my, my finger was burning at the end of the call. So that was years ago. I started reading about the science and connecting with other scientists. and. And um, really my expertise, I've taken care of a lot of patients with chronic disease. So when I talk about diabetes and for instance, heart failure, that you know, the, the National Toxicology Program shows clear evidence of cardiomyopathy in that study. In other words, that's a precursor to congestive heart failure. And I wanna just read one thing, if you'll allow me. This is from the United States Renal Data System, Healthcare Expenditures for Persons with Chronic Kidney Disease. So over half of the 2015 Medicare spending for beneficiaries aged 65 and older was for those who had diagnoses of CKD, diabetes mellitus, or heart failure. All three of these conditions, when you look as an independent scientist, not someone who's funded by wireless, um, all of those three conditions are linked. So diabetes and heart failure are linked with EMF exposures. They're, it's very clear. Doctor, what are, what are your trained medical professional? Yes. We don't have one on the panel. What are we to make with, uh, of the American Cancer Society, for example, telling us there's no evidence of of uh, harmful product. Well, at this point, there's a there's an interna a national and international 5G appeal. I don't know how many thousands of people have signed, but the point is is that many of these organizations have conflicts of interest, and I can't speak to I don't know who's on their board, who made these decisions. I my testimony comes from I've been reading this literature for years. And really I got interested in it because I spent my career taking care of so many patients who were sick in the hospital that when I found out about the links, I was just shocked. I couldn't believe it. So I've, I've read these articles myself and the experts who don't work for telecom and who are in their independent research, everyone comes to the same conclusion. This isn't We've, we're not in a place where we should be debating this anymore. This is exactly what happened with tobacco. It's the exact same thing. And really, right now, the only people protecting, the, on, the only people who are able to protect Americans are our legislators. Because we don't have any, any relevant um, regulatory guidelines to protect human health. The FCC guidelines were developed for short-term exposures, six minutes, 30 minutes, depending on it's a phone or an outdoor exposure. And they have absolutely no connection to the biological effects that have been very clearly summarized in the bio initiative. That, uh, that's a, a huge document generated. All, all, the, you know, all of the, the summaries are there. I, I, and I've got it here for you if anyone wants to read it. I have very concise summaries and abstracts documenting everything that I'm saying. So I know there are plenty of people here that are probably rolling their eyes, but you know, in academic medicine, we have a name for what's happening now with 5G. It, this is called, and what has happened with wireless communication, this is called, you know, 5G is an untested application of a technology that we know is harmful. We know it from the science. 
This is, in, in academics, this is called human subjects research. Human subjects research is very tightly regulated. You can't just roll out some type of a research project on human beings unless, A, you have their informed consent, so they understand the risks and benefits, and B, you have the approval, like someone has actually, you know, examined the literature and said, okay, this research project, we believe that it's safe. There's no evidence in the science to indicate that it would not be safe. We have decades of evidence to show that it is not safe. Thank um, you, Dr. Goldberg. Thank you. Uh, and uh, very briefly, if you can, what do you, what's your what do you mean by conflict of interest? I mean that, um, so I've taught, one of the things that I taught in medical school is evidence-based medicine. So teaching medical students and residents how to critically evaluate the literature, the science. And one of the first things that you teach residents is that you always have to look at the funding. So, and, and you can read about it. Marsha Engel, the editor of, of New England Journal, just wrote a great op-ed in the New York Times about, about researchers who are funded by private industry, the results of their research um, are much more likely to support their, the, whatever it is that is being funded. Thank that's, you. yeah, that's Thank clear. Representative Garrett has a question. Yes. Good morning, doctor. Just Good a morning. really quick question. What is the normal RMF that uh, individual could be exposed to? And if these small cells are installed, what is the prediction of how much RMF uh, the human body would experience? And then the second question would be, if we notice, if we know that RMF is a issue, do we limit the amount of exposure um, that um, somebody with uh, cardio issues in the hospitals, whether they're going through a CAT scan or, so are we limiting that because we know that just small cells alone is not the issue. It's, you, as you talked about earlier, it's the sandwich. So give me the normal levels, what the prediction, prediction is um, that the human body would experience moving forward. Well, I'm so glad that you're asking that question. Um, and the answer is that well, no, one, no one's measuring, and, and that is the problem. That's the problem, because we have, um, and I, I, the way I think about this is in an in, in occupational health perspective. I think about, because we, people go to work, and we, so for instance, your exposure will depend on where, like what you do in a given day. So if one cell phone causes cancer, clear evidence of cancer, DNA damage, heart damage. Well, what happens if you work at an airport? What, what happens if you work in a stadium where there are 100,000 people coming to watch a football game and everyone's using their phone at the same time? And so the problem is that we have a very, very systematic, clear, empiric way to measure these exposures, and it's a discipline called building biology, and we actually have someone here trained in building biology, and I asked him to bring the meters. If anyone after this meeting is interested, I can, I can show anyone exactly how we measure, okay? But that is the problem, that we don't measure, and there are certain situations relevant to public safety where we really do need to be measuring with firefighters, with airline pilots. Because when you activate uh, microwave radiation inside an enclosed metal space, you get, you get amplification, you have increased power density. So think about it, an airplane, everyone's with their devices, every device is emitting radiation, and the, the, the access point is right next to the cockpit usually. So what does this do to pilots? What does this do to firefighters? We already have uh, a submission to the FCC from Susan Foster about firefighters that were unable to function in the line of duty. This is from 2013, after, uh, after exposure to a cell tower that was put up near their, near their station. And they, they also have two-way communication devices that they wear. So we have to measure these exposures. That is the, the start. And not go ahead and roll out a whole bunch of internet of things with more, like more devices that we're not even measuring what we're exposed to now. Doctor, and thanks for your testimony. Thank you.